Yeah, hello and welcome to the Benta Blitz show, the final Benta Blitz show before the Chessable Masters starts tomorrow. So <clears throat> let's get started and let's see who is challenging me. Am I already? Yeah, I'm already in the right um, screen. Now let's start with playing Prom Night. And uh, I had a request. What was the request again? The Catalan, right? Now, I'm not sure if we get a Catalan. Hey, it could be, yeah, I'll try. Almost. So we get this line here against Prom Knight. So, yeah, also greetings to all the chat, uh, chat participants on various platforms. I'm currently monitoring the chat on Chess24, on Twitch, on uh, YouTube. And uh, what is that? We have Mixer now, yeah? What on earth is Mixer? Yeah. I don't know what that is. We had Periscope also, that was... What is Periscope? Is that something that's Twitter or something like that? I really have no clue. So in any case, I have the somewhat better position here, I think against Prom Knight. What is he doing? Queen A5, maybe he wants to go E5, but then I'm going to go Knight D5. So that should not be such a big issue. Oh, that looks strange. Really? Undefending the knight? I have all kinds of direct ideas. E5, then knight G5, and so on. Ui, ui, ui. Is that a good idea? Let's go E5. I just spotted, if he takes here, I will just win the rook. Okay, but if he moves this, and now I go b4, how does he not lose a piece? That would be interesting to learn. On the other hand, knight g5 is also pretty strong. But b4 is a piece, right? The only thing is that knight takes e3 is of course strategically absolutely awful for me. I win a piece, but my piece coordination is complete trash. Okay, but still. Knight takes e3 is an intermediate attack on the queen, so I cannot just take his queen. I will definitely win, win material now. Thing is, he can try to play knight takes b4, but after a takes, queen takes, I might still have good tempo moves like knight d4, discovered attack on the rook. That actually looks like it wins even more material. Yeah, that is pretty strong, I think. If he moves the queen to a6, I just play b5 and win uh, the knight. Okay, so this. And now I thought knight d4 in this position. Attacking the rook and this wins even more stuff. Give me stuff. No. Yeah, thanks for the game. Prom knight that loses a full rook here in the corner, I think. Yeah, in general, I would really recommend not to play like this. That is not a great line. This kind of position is excellent for white. All right, so uh, here we go. Who is challenging me? Gus Box. Gus Box, okay. Always like to play new opponents, new people. Yeah, recent weeks have seen a good increase of new um, memberships and accounts on all chess platforms. So you play many new players, always good. 
Hello to Spaceman Piff, no, Spaceman Spiff 2020. Imagine that the man with username Chess Explained explains chess well. Yeah, I try my best. I try my best. So here I'm going for a double Fianchetto, b2 and g2. Good spots for the bishop. And with the bishop on b2, I've got lots of control over e5. So e5 is not so easy to play. Now he can do that, but there is a problem tactically with knight takes e5. So we'll see what he does now. Knight takes e5 gives me a pawn very simply, and this is also winning a pawn because of this pin on the d-file. However, black can play knight g4 and knight takes e4. This is not good, but it requires me to remember my own chess book, which can be tricky. Knight takes f7, I think, is right. King f7, bishop g7, knight takes, whoops, your queen, buddy. I take the queen. Gift me the queen. Yeah, I didn't see that. He has to take on f7. I can show you the line. Yeah, thanks for the game, Gus Box. So I'm going to show you what I was talking about. What black should do is king takes, then bishop takes g7. Now, if he simply takes on g7 with the king, I'm going to take here and I'm just a pawn up for not much. The tricky move is knight takes f2, this desperado move. And black is essentially doing the same thing as I did. I took on f7, attacking the queen. He can take here, attacking the queen. Now, the trick is this one. Rook takes e8. The queen has to take. And now the killer is queen d4. And that is the move that should be remembered. So, queen d4. Funny enough, he can check now on e1. That looks at first pretty menacing, but I can simply drop back. And now... The only thing that he can try is he can check here, okay? This is no problem, right? And there is no check on f2. And I have g7 covered with the queen. So it's funny because <laughs> the pieces are all hanging. But if we are here, they can move the knight or they can try c5. After c5, I think this is the winner, if I remember correctly. But... I don't know, I only have written the book on that stuff. And it's just 17 moves of theory. But I think this is right. I think this is right. White wins. Okay, <laughs> now the next game. Um, okay, Gaith. By the way, if you are new to the stream, so that I'm not talking nonsense, there really, there really is a book that I've written <laughs> with this opening. <laughs> Okay, let's play knight f3. Ah. All right, d6, let's go d4. And um, this d4 book has a course on Chessable, which is currently on sale. So if you want to get the Chessable version of this course, now is the time. It's still on for the time of the tournament, yeah, the tournament, um, the, the, the chessable thingy, masters, yeah, next two weeks, my, all my big courses are on sale, the fight like Magnus is on sale, and also, um, D4, E4, yeah, 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 it's, uh, this is the longest line, yeah, it's a very long line, <laughs> yeah, what is simple there is mostly the general approach. There is a kind of a common theme with knight f3, g3 and so on. And this is a bit easier to learn. Mm. 
Why don't you just play the same moves as Magnus to be as good as him? That's a, that's a good suggestion. You can copy uh, some of the openings of the top players, for sure. I mean, I have written this fight like Magnus uh, Sicilian repertoire, and this is basically copying some of the lines that Magnus plays. It's not a bad approach. He, he knows what he's doing. But at some point in every game of chess, you have to think yourself. And that is usually where the problems begin. <laughs> if you thinking is dangerous, it can be a dangerous thing to do. Okay, now, can we do something? I wanted to play bishop c5 and potentially go to d6. It's not quite working out. Black has defended this quite well. Gaith. Knight to a6. Yeah, can go knight a6. Now I don't have a fantastically good square there. Here? Hmm, not happy. I didn't do this too well. Black seems fine, yeah. Ah, by the way, I, I have to make a couple of additional announcements. Uh, wait, bishop e6. Uh, but g4 doesn't do much. Knight e6 is mostly a trade. Yeah, but I don't have anything else. So um, what I wanted to say is tomorrow is the first round of the Chessable Masters Tournament. That is the... Second tournament, is that the second one or a third one? Of the Magnus uh, Magnus Carlsen Chess Tour. Yeah, the online tour with a couple of tournaments. And um, this will have, wait, knight b5. It's not quite working, but close. Yeah. I don't have anything here, not even, an, not even the slightest advantage. So um, there will be coverage, of course, here on Chess24. The English-speaking commentary team will feature Anna Rudolf, Yasser Saravan, and Peter Swidler. So I don't think you can. I don't think you can improve on that. That's kind of fantastic. <laughs> and um, they start tomorrow, first round. And um, I'm happy to say that I'm invited to join that broadcast uh, at some point, probably for about an hour. And um, yeah, this is a really, really nice invitation. I'm not quite sure yet which time. So if you just watch tomorrow's broadcast here with Anna, Yasser Sarawan and Peter Swidler, I will be joining at some point. And um, yeah, looking forward to that. I have uh, done some live game commentary with strong um, players and with some really uh, good commentators, but Peter and Yasa are, yeah, <laughs> you, you cannot get much better, right? Kind of uh, living legends of chess annotation, chess uh, commentary, annotation is wrong, chess commentary. So, I got nothing. <laughs> Gave is just playing well. And just straight trade the house. And do I have a funny story about Yasser? Mm, not sure if, how funny it is. I have a story. But the funny thing is not so much um, Yasa, but what happened around him. Um, I have been playing, I should have gone to D2 actually. I have been playing for years in the Dutch league, The mostly in the, um, yeah, yeah but I should have gone to D2 anyway, mostly in the, in the first league, which is um, in the Netherlands called the, Meisterklasse, the master class, 
Um, and um, Yasser is, of course, living in the Netherlands for, I don't know, many years. So he's a regular player in that league. And in, um, in one year, we played his team that I think at the time it was, it was Hilversum. I don't like my position at all. It's really not good. And here was some, uh, some, some really uh, interesting players. One of them was Jubomir Jubojevic at the time. Um, still an active player. Nowadays, I think Jubo is retired. And um, it was extremely funny because a game happened uh, between Yasser and a friend of mine, um, German Grandmaster. And Yasser won that game and I felt pretty convincingly. And... Um, then they analyzed my friend and, and Yasser. And uh, Jubo Mirjubojevic joined this analysis and Jubo um, simply decided for whatever reason to take the side of my friend in the analysis, yeah, the black side of a King's Indian. And what was extremely funny, is that to draw? Is that um, Jubo was constantly making suggestions suggestions for for my friend, and Yasser was very unconvinced. Yeah, he absolutely loved his position in the King's Indian, and he was always just saying, "Jubo, are you sure you want to play this move? I think you are in really really bad shape. Why are you doing this to yourself?" <laughs> it was such a funny analysis. Yeah. And uh, Edgy Bujewicz is a natural optimist and he was always just analyzing for my friend, even though it was totally unwarranted. And um, Yasser yes, was really pretty much, uh, it was a bit, uh, he was a bit amazed that Jubo was simply not stopping, yeah? just always being uh, optimistic. And Yasser, yes, he was he's so friendly, like, nah. Let, you shouldn't do that to the opposition. This is so bad. Don't do that. <laughs> it was really fun. Okay, this is just a draw here, yeah, right? Or can I play G4 somehow? I don't think I can. No. No, I'm just going to offer him a draw. Nicely defended here by Gaith. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it was it was absolutely funny also um, that uh, that um, let's take this challenge. Uh, Jubo um, Jubo Mirjbush, he's a he's a multi is that a word multilinguist. He speaks like I don't know maybe seven or eight languages. Yeah, and uh, he was constantly switching between languages. That was so funny because uh, well, Yasser and my friend they analyzed in English and. And uh, Jubo was still saying something in German to my friend. Uh, and so it was, it was funny. It was absolutely hilarious. Okay, I'm playing Phlegmatico. And he just plays the main line of the main line of whatever, the four knights. A polyglot. Yeah, that is a really nice word for that. You're absolutely right. Polyglot, yeah, I lacked that word, but it's exactly what it is. And of course, uh, Jubojevic, he never learned any of those languages at school. He just is a natural born communicator. He just talks to people and uh, kind of learns all the languages this way. It was really fun. He's not playing anymore. Okay, now, Queen C2 maybe? basically retired. I'd like to play h3, bishop h5, knight f4. Mm, no. This line with knight e2, I recommended in my other book, <laughs> in my e4 book. But nobody wants to play that somehow. And I just suggested this in the book, but it doesn't feel, it doesn't seem like there are many takers for this. Yeah, Magnus is trash, is an account that is currently 
messaging me here on the Chess24 Chess and this player has already won against me in the German language show. He wants to play again. I have to think about that. I don't really like to play the same person multiple times simply to give more people a chance. This one, I'm a bit unsure here. But uh, there is this element of revenge, of course. So maybe I'm going to play him again. So I'm I'm kind of okay here, I guess, with the bishop pair. Black has has a really um, black has really reasonably active pieces that cannot be too bad. <clears throat> yeah, okay. Uh, I kind of expected that. If I take now here, then then my, my then my two bishops are hanging. Yeah, that is not so good. Ah, okay. After the if I move my bishop here, maybe wants to go rook to d4. What does he want to do? No. Take it. Yeah, and now there yeah, that's a bit of a problem. Um yeah, okay. Ah that's not good. I wanted to go to E1 to preserve my bishop, but that doesn't actually work as B2 is hanging. And if I have to go give that up, I, I should better go here. Okay, that's not ideal. I mean, I don't think I have a problem here, really. With the two bishops, I'm always fine. But it's not ideal. Bishop d5? Mm, yeah, that is, that's just not much at all. Probably just a draw. Oops, I have, I have no time. That was a three-minute game. Ouch. Ouch. What? Who are you referring to on Twitch? Why oh, are you just trolling? Uh, I'm, I'm speeding up a little bit at least. Keeping all the pawns. Run. Forest run. I mean, that's not forest, but still. Keep the spawn. Uh, I'm too slow. Uh, I'm too slow. Yeah, he's he's sped up at some point. I mean, okay. Um, let's see. Pirino's Floga played him a couple of times. Is there somebody new there? Zerta. He's a new new guy. Too weak, too slow. Yeah, probably. I don't think I played so badly. I was just... Uh... Yeah, there's no need to apologize. I mean, if you... We, do, we both have to play quickly. And I mean, the position is, of course, totally lost. So you can resign if you like. But people don't do that usually. So it's just a matter who's quicker. So let's play the Sveshnikov and see what Serta is up to. He just takes that. Okay. Hmm. 
Okay. Can we go for something drastic? How bad is age five? Yeah, is that is that too much? Takes takes. Huh. I think this is a bit too much. Yeah. No, I have never played the Budapest Gambit in a serious tournament game. I don't think this is very likely to happen, but it's not such a terrible opening, but not really interested there. Yeah, I mean, this doesn't work, right? But if I play knight g4, there's only this thing. Let's see. Takes, takes, I play, I threaten queen h4. So after takes, takes, I can pre-move that. He has to go g3. I'm not, I'm almost quick enough to pull that off. Almost. Yeah, he has to go g3, but it irritates him quite a bit. Okay, so he's attacking f7, okay. That is not, not friendly. Hmm. Okay, I have to go back. It's just like, that is a weird move because he could have taken, but it's not a bad move. So this one, he will probably just trade stuff. I have to be quick, yeah, it's a three minute game and it's um, something where the time will be really important. So if I'm as slow as in the game before, I will just lose on time. Position does not matter then. Okay. I this I don't mind at all. Mm. Yeah, I think I'll take here first and make his pawn structure really bad. Ooh. <laughs> okay. I'll take it. That was a funny little intermediate move. Okay, take the pawn on b2. He just wants to trade, trade the house. Okay, yeah, now my pawn structure looks really nice. Just one pawn island, that's really cool. And white has three, yeah, this is uh, usually a good thing. One pawn island, okay, takes, I've got a really nice central pawn roller. The thing is, he only has 14 seconds. That dead is not going to work out. So, check. I'll take that. All right. Thanks for the game, Serta. He should have taken the knight on g4. I was just like, you you have to have to take this kind of thing. Okay. Liam MC93. Yep, let's get started. Oops, no, that is wrong. Not the not the B pawn. <laughs> okay, now I have a couple of moves I can play. I go g6. That's the one that I have in the course. 
and e5. Okay, interesting. It's a very healthy way of developing what white is doing here. That cannot be bad. Cover the pawn there on c5. I'd like to play f5. f5 is a simple idea f4 i am winning a piece so um oops okay i'll take it yeah i think the main purpose of the username magnus carlson is trash is to <laughs> is to get him to play in banter yeah he likes to play against people who have those insults <laughs> in the name. He probably played he probably played Magnus before in one of the Bento Blitzes. Yeah, I'm here I'm piece up and I don't see much in terms of a compensation. Yeah, this makes sense. Open up the position a little bit. I'm going to Okay, this is just a fantastic square on e5. Yeah, that's true. Magnus also played against the player who was called Magnus is poor player. I remember that. I was one, I think in in one of the first Bento Blitzes, maybe in the in the absolute very first one. Okay, now I can check on d4, but it doesn't do much. So I'm not really in a rush. Okay, that, that's a bit that's a bit dangerous. Yeah, check. And now king here, yeah, bishop b5 is the thing. I'm going to play this next. Check. Okay, now I can trade queens. Do I have more? Like, it's a bit unfortunate that my queen is hanging. Otherwise, rook c8 would work. I know I can take his rook with the check, but how is he unpinning himself? And it doesn't, it simply is not happening. I would like to go rook c8 and rook c1 checkmate. That would be nice. Last bent of Blitz Magnus lost to a 1900. Did you see that? Oh, um, I mean, <laughs> I, I lose wacky games against all kinds of opposition, so that's made. That was the idea. So I didn't see it though. Did he did he make a mouse slip or something something odd? So let's play chess with a DHD. I'm going to go what I'm going to do. Knight f3. Was better to take the rook. And why? I mean he couldn't save it, right? I didn't see how I could save it. So, this is a five minute game. That is important to note. I can actually think about some of the decisions a little bit. Okay. No, that is that is too slow. The thing is, like here, you cannot really change the course of the game that much so early on. 
And it's something where you just have to be a little bit quicker, a little bit, because it's not a big difference if you play knight d7 first or knight f6 or e6 and so on. You're not going to spoil the game and um, you spend so much time. Maybe I should have gone knight e5 actually. Black's move order is a little bit odd. Never moving the knight out. Hmm, yeah, I'll just castle. Maybe can take c4. I've played this maybe in a little bit of a, a little bit of a too relaxed fashion. Mm, I can take. And the question in the Twitch chat, if I'm giving private lessons. Um, I do have some students still, but um, it is not not a lot because I am fully focused on writing new chessable content and supporting the content that is out. And this is taking all my time. So I'm not taking any new students because simply there is no chance that I can provide anything really useful um, to, to them. You need to prepare lessons and um, you need to really uh, invest a bit of time to help people. You cannot just do some standard stuff, whatever. And this is not possible anymore for me. I just have too many other things in writing and um, yeah, videos, shows like that and so on. It's not possible to um, take new students. Okay, G4, F4 is interesting, yeah? There was a question, um, what I think of the POC champ issue. Is there an issue? An issue um, implies that there is some kind of problem I don't see a problem. As far as I know, um, as, as far as I know, the the um, the POC champs um, broadcast on Twitch was the most viewed show on all of Twitch when it was on, like yesterday or the day before. Like of all Twitch channels globally, the POC Champs broadcast um, was had the most viewers. This is like out of this world. Great. I mean, so what? What? what is the issue? I think it's just fantastic that we get this kind of um, exposure and many new people are interested in chess and look at it. Um, I do understand that um, that um, some people say, okay, this this is not really great chess what they play. Um, yeah, this is uh, this is true, of course. Yeah, they make many mistakes because they are mostly. Um, yeah, beginner players more or less. They sometimes, uh, in some cases, I think they only have learned the rules um, um, just before the tournament. So this is clear that they are making many mistakes. But the thing is, the 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 viewer, the people who are attracted by this um, by this broadcast, they are not better players than the ones that participate. And for them, this is completely normal chess. They not they don't think about it in terms of, oh, wait, yeah, there, there is a better way to play or something like that. They don't see it like that. And the thing is, it is much more relatable to people if mistakes are happening. If you have beginner players, real beginner players who started out chess um, just a short while ago and they watch Magnus playing 
um, and um, it is then um, the commentary is done, let's say, by, by Peter Swidler and Jan Gustafsson. What what exactly is it that they should learn there, other than they understand nothing, nothing at all? So it's it's great that we have a, a large variety of, of broadcasts and things that you can watch on Twitch. I think it would be not a good thing if there would be only this kind of chess. But why not have it? It's fine. It's just totally fine. Yeah, the game is difficult to judge here because Black is just playing far too slowly. Yeah, you just have to play quicker. It's five minute chess. Yeah, thanks for the game. Chess with ADHD. No, then you're not you're not understanding me correctly. They if you have a beginner player and they they watch Peter and Jan discussing yeah the the details of the martial attack in the Rue Lopez, what exactly is the, is the beginner doing with that information? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. At some point they will say, this is all nice and good, these people are cool people. But I don't understand what they're talking about. And then after a short while, they will simply stop watching. Because if you, you, you cannot watch people constantly talking a language that you don't understand, basically. So this is totally fine. It's for beginner players. Yeah? I mean, we have millions of people who play chess, know the rules of chess. And for them, it's fine. So why not? Why not? I think it's totally fine. There also should be more more shows um, like that um, initiated by various platforms, not just um, this event, but but more. It's um, totally totally fine. Okay, a bit of an odd <laughs> opening here by Orest. Yeah, exactly. That is what uh, there. Somebody says that. There, there should be multiple uh, channel options. Yeah, you have a beginner style commentary and you have some more sophisticated commentary. Why not? This is currently not done, but would be, I think, extremely helpful. Okay, while I was um, talking about all that, the position here got complicated. This one, interesting. So, yeah, it's interestingly played here by Orest. I wonder if I should go, I think I should actually play Queen A4 next. Oh, he goes back there. That makes sense. I need to improve my knight. My knight here is not good on F3. G3, E3, those squares would be good, but I don't get there easily. Okay. I wonder if he does something wacky like G5. This is kind of his style. I've played him. Yeah. yeah. If you <laughs> know your opponent, it's kind of helpful. Yeah, I want to connect the knight here with the weak squares, yeah, like h5 and f5. This is um, now done. Now I could go c5 here. Open up the position. Okay, I can check him. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is really helpful, but I'm going to take here first. Rook b6 maybe. 
yeah, put some pressure on D6. And knight, knight F5 is not doing that much, actually, now that I think of it a little bit. I move that back, a bit strange. I'm not sure, um, The there's a question, when is the next Jan and Peter broadcast? I'm not sure, the Chessable Masters will be commentated by Anna Rudolph, Peter Swidler and Yasser Sarawan. As I said earlier, I'm going to be on that show for a period of time, probably about an hour. And also one, one, one general thing that I want to say about um, these, these shows, and it doesn't really, it's not really important if we're talking about this POC champs or something else. Um, this is all a kind of a new situation for chess, that there's so much uh, interest in, in those online shows. And you have to figure out what works and what doesn't. You cannot know it right from the bat. Like this is a great format, this is whatever. You have to try out things. And simply by looking at the view count, it's completely clear that POC Champs is a fantastic success. So of course it's, 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 it will be repeated. There's absolutely no question about that. Other formats might work, other formats might not work, and we will see what happens. People learn, try out stuff, and step by step, you will see new things. All right, thanks for the game, Orest. Yeah, I was a bit quicker at the end, and at the end, I win the queen. The Chess of Masters is a tournament uh, initiated by Magnus Carlsen, um, and it starts tomorrow. It's an online tournament, it's fantastically. Um, what is the right word there? Fantastically what? <laughs> I mean, uh, the lineup is fantastic. Let's play Serious Llama. There's a good question there by Ultra Blood. And the question is, if I think I'll be able to destroy Ben Feingold. So, what is this question all about? <laughs> it's a simple question and it has a background because next week on Thursday, I'm going to play Ben Feingold actually in an online match. It's fun. I'm going to play Ben um, in a match for roughly two and a half hours late uh, in the evening. And this is initiated by uh, the Charlotte uh, Chess Center. Well, the Charlotte Scholastic Chess Center and so on. I'm sorry. I would have to look that up. I should know how they're called as they have invited me. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, and um, yeah, looking forward to uh, maybe have some of you watch that match. It will be broadcast on Twitch. And I think that um, Daniel Neroditsky will do the commentary. I'm not totally sure about that, but it would be quite logical because he's the head coach of the Charlotte Chess Center. But I'm just, this is just speculation. I don't know. So I'm just trading stuff, thinking that the end game should be good for me. Probably this is the right assumption. Now, he has to go king d2, and I'm more or less a pawn up, because he cannot move the king. The Charlotte Chess Center and Scholastic Academy. 
Thank you. So he should run out of moves fairly shortly and then I win the c3 pawn, so... It was it was really long. <laughs> this is the name of the organization was extremely long. C C C S A. Okay. Yeah, you should probably check out their Twitch channel or their website. They they um, have a couple of things coming. Uh, the, the match that I play against Ben Feingold is just one of the things. Um, just have to adjust my seating position a little bit. How long have I been playing chess? For 33 years, I think. Sounds like a long time, and it is a long time. He's running out of moves. A4, C5. All right, Sirius Lama resigns. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to win more pawns now, now that I'm, um, I have invaded his position. All right, now, Diego Ubiera is challenging me from the Dominican Republic. That's a cool place. Never been there, but when I mean, you don't see people from that place challenge you too often. Okay, so G3. I have to monitor all the chat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you if you have just started chess like a year ago, you have a long, long time to still improve. My improvement mostly happened in the first 10 years though. <clears throat> I got to close to my peak rating after eight years or nine years. And then you <clears throat> somehow think it's a good idea to occupy some office space and don't do chess all that much. All right, now this is a mainline Catalan, right? And that was requested earlier that I should play it. I mean, I could uh, look that up now, yeah, what, what's going on, but that is not really fair. Incidentally, I, I, I opened exactly the pages, yeah? But I think this is not something that I have analyzed anyway. Knight bd7, so let's just develop. What is he going to do? No, I'm not going to play the, Jer the Jerome Gambit. I'm actually a little bit um, surprised. I actually know what that is because it was recently somehow um, mentioned on Twitter, yeah, the Jerome Gambit. It's a funny opening where you just immediately are piece down for, for nothing, I think. Oh yeah, okay, in a bullet game or so you can do all kinds of things, but not really recommended. So Diego is taking quite a bit of time. I wonder how did I spend 50 seconds by simply being slow at the very beginning, yeah, talking talking nonsense. I I spent too much time talking nonsense. Okay. In Bento Blitzes you should talk some nonsense, but maybe do that faster. Thankfully enough, Diego Ubiera is also not the quickest player on earth. Hey, somebody says there's an American guy who has a blog only about the Jerome Gambit. 
Whoa, okay. I mean, I guess everybody wants their, their niche, yeah? Somebody is then the best Jerome Gambit player in the whole world, even though it's probably complete trash. But I can always say the best Jerome Gambit player worldwide. Okay, I'm a bit surprised that he took it. Wants to go into the dark squares. Hmm. Uh, yes, I do live in Germany. That is the truth. Queen to b4. All right. Let's go here. I, I want to really checkmate the guy. I mean, I've got some pieces near his king. And he does not want to get checkmated. This is a very understandable thing. Wants to trade. I don't want to trade. No. And here, in fact, I'm threatening rook d1 and to take on d8 and then f7 is really tender. There, there are certainly some tactics coming. All right, so here's a tactic, rook d1. Let's see where the queen goes. And now I'll take here. Wait, 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 wait. E1 is hanging with a check. Check, 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 check. Knight h5, check there. It's always hanging with a bloody check on e1. That is not fair. Okay. I need to be quicker. Ouch. Very stupid. I spent ages, ages, and then I didn't do anything reasonable. Mm, not good. And black was probably completely busted. What? Yeah, you have to be quick at the end, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm up uh, a ton, but uh, you can always uh, lose on time if they if they are quicker. And I'm not really quick. Now, um, who else is challenging me? Ikarov, not a new opponent, many new players. So I'm going to play Ikarov or Ikarov, I don't know. So maybe e4 just mix it up a little bit what is the isn't the G jerome gambit some bishop takes f7 that doesn't work at all i thought it doesn't work at all It was known late in the 19th century. Interesting. Yeah, Ikarov is not playing, right? What is that gambit? Is it, is it this? Is that the Jerome gambit? Or what is the Jerome Gambit? This? I have no clue. <laughs> Can you? I mean, this is just nonsense. What is the point? <laughs> it just absolutely makes no sense. Or do you get at least one piece back? Queen h5, you get one piece back? Or what's the, what's the thing? Okay. So g6, queen takes e5. Okay. But can I, if I just go back, what's the thing? 
I, mean, I don't want to analyze this now, really, but I just don't understand it. Like, it, not at all. And what now? White resigns, or what's the deal? I'm just a piece up, right? Yeah, I mean, but it's just lost, right? It's just lost. It makes no sense at all. What is actually somewhat tricky is the Halloween Gambit, but I'm not going to go there now. The Halloween Gambit is kind of, I mean, it's not good, but it's something that you can definitely, um, as a surprise weapon in Blitz, yeah, you can play the Halloween Gambit, I think, because... I mean, you can refute it probably, but it's not so easy. And uh, it's something that um, in a practical game could be tried. Somebody played that against me um, last Sunday in, in the Blitz tournament. And um, I was really shocked <laughs> that this happened. And I totally, totally forgot how it is working. I mean, I, I looked, I looked at this in the in the, one of the repertoires that I have written, the Caruana repertoire uh, for black e four e five for black, and um, I totally forgot how the Halloween gambit has to be played with black, and I was thinking like a minute after they sacrificed on e five, and then I couldn't, I couldn't remember it. Yeah, simply. Okay, so while I was talking about all this, my opponent has played a bit, a bit oddly. He played h5, h4 for no particular reason. And I won that pawn. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. The Halloween Gambit is not something I would recommend you to play in every single game. I'm just saying, if you play a Blitz game and you have looked at this a little bit, you can play that as a surprise weapon. Because you're not going to, um, I mean, if they know everything perfectly, like perfectly, you will be worse, but you will not even immediately lose. And um, I mean, people, people don't know that. They don't know everything. And my, my theoretical knowledge is really good. And I had forgotten simply what I was uh, analyzing there. What is that? I thought about this, but I thought it cannot work. So I take it. Queen takes. Uh, my bishop doesn't have that many good squares. That's the point. Okay. I could take h5. Simply play. Yeah, come on. Let's play for position. I don't need to refute this immediately. There, there's, there are good ways to give the piece back against the Halloween Gambit. You can also, you can also take the material and win. I think this is the best line, but it's really tricky. It's not so easy at all. The kind of thing that, like in in a correspondence game or so, I mean, it's just like over. But um, we're talking about blitz chess. And now you can play it. Okay, what I did here, yeah, is not good. It's really not good. Knight f3 takes, queen takes, just about works. And here I have knight e3, or I can take here, but knight f3 is actually a check. This is a bit of a thing. I can take here. Oh, I'm um, sorry. I can play this and then I can take cover g2. Could have taken e7, but that doesn't do much. If I take e5, bishop takes...
this maybe. Knight takes h4 as a threat and knight takes e7, check. What the heck? What an odd game. I is probably taking this. Does he have something better than queen takes f5? I would be surprising. I don't even see a move. Oh, really? Okay. So take here. And bishop takes. Yeah, it's kind of possible. So stopping h3. Fortunately, I'm a little bit ahead on time, so I don't have to necessarily win on position. Okay, I, I'm just ahead too much on the clock. Yeah, and he loses on time. That was tricky all of a sudden. That was really, really tricky. Okay, um, thanks for the game. D4, D5, C4, E6. Now, who else is on? Um, what about my rating? I could try to at least cross the 2700 mark. But I have a challenge by Art Carden, who's totally new, so why not? So, um, e4, let's play e4. Bullet? No. Not bullet, please. <laughs> it's close to midnight. I cannot play bullet late at night. So, Philidor's defense. Let's see how he handles it. Yeah, against this. It's not so promising to take. Instead, developing here makes more sense. Okay. A6 is still a problem. Uh, problem is wrong. A6 still poses some problems. So. Now he just gives me the piece. A6 was still interesting. A6, bishop a4, b5. So taking the knight now. And I'm also threatening c6 takes b7, check. Winning about everything. Yeah, that wins the, wins the house. Okay. Oh, that looks like there should be some mate coming. Bishop g5. Um, it looks a lot, it looks somehow like, um, what is that called? Um, legal's mate, yeah. Mate of legal or something, yeah. I'm probably uh, completely butchering the pronunciation. Like knight e5, there is knight. I see knight d5, guys. I see that move. I just wondered if I have a maid. I don't see a maid. But it looks like there should be one. King e6, where's the maid? King e6, I don't see a mate in one. Bishop takes f6, yeah, probably has to be done. 
Now I'm threatening knight g5 mate. Knight f4 followed by queen d5. Maybe. It's a bit sad that I didn't find a mate here. Knight d4 takes queen g4. I mean, yeah, it's probably. Maybe this is the quickest. No, check. King e5, f4, check. The quicker mate? No, probably not. f4, king e4. I see a couple of mates in two, but is there a mate in one? Okay, this is also mate. Okay, thanks for the game, Art Carden. I actually won one rating point there, and you lost one. That's not fair. Losing a, a, a point there on your end. So um, maybe I can play the highest challenge and see if a possible win gets me closer to that 2700 mark. Oh, D4. We have only 13 minutes left in the show, so maybe I can uh, gain those seven points. That would be nice. We have a Grunfeld Fianchetto. That's a fairly solid line for black. Okay, bishop e4, a4, okay, queen e2 is good. White is um, usually enjoying a small advantage here. Not much. Yeah, I think you're not far off there, Miktal. Mick is saying that my loss against Magnus is trash. It's uh, one of my worst games ever. That is maybe not far off. <laughs> But um, I mean, it, it, it happens, it happens. It was a game that I lost earlier in the German language show. All right, so before maybe get something going on the queen side. Yeah, b5, I want to go b5 and open, open the position. This one, knight b6 though. Okay, come on, play b5. Yeah, that game was pretty bad, I know. You don't have to remind me five times or so. The the Ben the match against Ben Feingold um, will we play? <laughs> it's it's not really a big deal, but like uh, you don't have to do it five times. Um, I don't really think it's it it adds much <laughs> to the whole thing. Um, so uh, what what was the thing? Oh, yeah, the Ben Ben Feingold match. It's on Thursday next Thursday, um, and it is played at. 8.30 in the evening, Central European time, 
so it's 2.30 Eastern time in the US. Okay, I want to stop his C5 if possible. It's not so easy though. This one, rook b2, rook a8, looks good. Very good, actually. Very good. How am I preparing? Uh, that is easy to say um, for that match against Ben. My prep uh, will be to play a couple of bullet games, zero, one zero bullet games because I quite regularly play three minute and five minute. So I'm kind of used to that time controls, but I don't play a bullet at all. Like one zero, I never play. And um, 30 minutes of that match will be played in one zero. And I need to practice that a little bit. And I know Ben is not uh, slow, eh? he's reasonably fast. He's known to be really, really fast in over the board bullet chess. And so he will be kind of quick also online. And I have to absolutely practice that. Nah, I need more time. Would like to figure out if c4 d5 is good for me. It should be, but I don't have enough time. This move is the thing. Okay. Here or here? I don't, I cannot figure it out. Bishop d4. Uh, that's a very good pin though. Okay. He can never unpin. G4, G5 is deadly. Yeah, thanks for the game. Pirinos Flogar. Six points, so 2699. That means if I win a final game, then I'm going to probably get to that 2700 again. Let's see if somebody is challenging me that I have never played, oops, never played before. I've played everybody. This is not what I was thinking, so. Okay, let's play Bo. Bo, I, uh, 2699. <laughs> Bo, yeah. Um, okay, I go knight f6. Maybe I can play a Benko Gambit or something. Yeah, the Benko Gambit. Yeah, that is true. Elo Zwerg says Ben Feingold plays several pre-moves in one turn that you cannot do on chess 24. That's true. He also cannot do it on Lee Chess and there, it is, there the match is played. So Ben is not going to be able to play all the pre-moves uh, in one go. That's true. You cannot challenge me if you don't have premium. But there will probably um, there were probably some good discounts now when they're when the chest level masters is running. Hey, Bo, Bo is playing a pretty much a theoretical line. It's, um, it's a real main line, yeah. Okay, so you, you honestly know all this stuff with a 1500 rating, oh my goodness, people really know their openings. Uh, 
Okay. To take there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I would definitely play. The thing is, the show is over in seven minutes or so, and um, I cannot really play longer. So I'm not sure that we would get a game in like immediately. If you get premium, you, you, you can try Elo Zwerg. I'm, I'm a little bit reluctant to play longer than the planned time because sometimes there are, I'm, I'm blocking a channel, you know, and sometimes there are other broadcasts and uh, therefore I don't like to do overtime. I know this is probably not the best move, but I don't want to get mated on G7. Yeah. <laughs> Very pragmatic solution. Don't get checkmated. Yeah, now he's out of his idea, probably. No, I will not be streaming during that match. Uh, this is not what they wanted uh, to have. They simply said we should not stream. I guess they want to uh, do their own streaming. Makes sense. I mean... And my uh, playing level would also probably suffer. My idea is bishop as c8 e6. After f3, there is not much going on on that long diagonal. And I want to challenge him here. Interesting play. Yeah, I will be on cam. We will be in a Zoom call. I think this is always good to have the players um, um, what to have the players reactions who plays like that very strange what Knight a5, bishop a5 wins an exchange. If I move the knight, I can go to a7 and it looks like completely, looks like trash, but probably have to do that. Yeah, bishop d7, meh. Then he takes on c6 and plays bishop a5 again, winning an exchange. This is the move that I think does not give the exchange up. Okay. What's the ideal time control online if the objective is to improve? I would uh, go for um, what you usually would consider a rapid time control. Bishop a5 again. Ah, come on, play your bishop a5, do your worst. Something that is rapid with a bit of an increment, maybe like 10 seconds or uh, 15 seconds, something like that, and a base time of um, probably like 30, 30 minutes, 30 plus 10, 25 plus 5, something that is leading to a game that is maximum an hour. You can also go for slightly shorter, but enough that you can really consider your moves and you should definitely afterwards analyze the game. Yeah, I have a bit of an advantage here. I'm a little bit quicker, right? He's taking a long time for his decisions and this can help, can be helpful. 
the night is also kind of hmm yeah kind of off this night has no squares It's a bit. I would um, analyze the game if you play a, like a rapid game. I would uh, look at. I would look at um, your games first of all without the computer briefly and yeah, get, get some ideas, and have your own perception what the game was like, and then I would check it with the computer. It's best if you have a human player look help you uh, with the anal analysis of the game. It's a different perspective if you have a human um, helping you. You should, of, of course, always at the end of it, make a check with the computer because it would always be stronger, just objectively stronger with pointing out possible mistakes. But um, only uh, doing it with the engine without any human insight is not so great. It's uh, also sometimes the, the computer is just extremely brutal in pointing out your mistakes and in many cases, uh, mistakes by computer standards um, are not really mistakes for uh, human players. Yeah, because the computer is like close to perfection and some mistakes simply happen, in particular, if you know the time is not uh, unlimited. I hope you enjoyed the show. As mentioned, I'll be on the um, Chessable Masters broadcast tomorrow, like for an hour. I don't know the time exactly join the broadcast as well it will be fun we have a um, great commentary team and of course excellent games coming i think magnus is actually playing ikaru right tomorrow so it will be pretty cool thanks a lot for watching bye bye